Japan will get us underway at BT Murrayfields in the first game of what we hope will be a belter of a final oh. weekend in the Autumn oh. Nation Series. Oh. And Japan, well, they will need a solid start, and that is not going to do their nerves any good at all. Yamanaka makes a mistake at the back, but has recovered well. And will set it up for Nagare. Ball through the hands, the Japanese. And this is self-inflicted by the Japanese as George Turner goes for and finds Cummings. And they now get that ball set. And it's in the arms of Turner at the back. And we saw Portugal cause Japan trouble with the mall last weekend. Scotland not quite getting it going, but now they do, and around the corner they come, and the ball was lost for a moment, but it's still there for Scotland, so it'll be a pick and go. Japan really struggling to hold on here. Van der Merwe is in there. Van der Merwe! Can you believe it? The winger picks and goes where normally only flankers and back rowers dare. But the winger was there, and in he goes for the try, and Scotland have the opener after just six minutes. Off that, Grant Gilchrist is on his shoulder. He's a big man, isn't he? Van der Merwe, very, very powerful. He gets low, gets in under Craig Miller and Sakate. They probably got to do better there. It's soft. Himeno set up for Nagare. Scotland being asked to do the tackling. Richie goes after it. It's just cleared out in time. Ball doesn't go to hand though, but it's because it's offside. Nothing to do with the attempt of James Moore to hold on. And then slowing the ball. For Matsuda to cut the Scottish lead. Which he takes up go the flags of the assistants Williams and Pirati. And Japan have their first points. Turner has it now. Scotland just changing the point of attack in that ball ever so subtly. Now it's released, little kick in behind. They're going to get in, are they? Harris goes after it, beautifully managed. Really well read by Fafita, who had to be so sharp. And didn't he do well as the kick from Johnson went in behind? Harris almost there. Japan, well, that's living dangerously. Eventually, boot the ball from Matsushima. And back there is Stuart Hogg. The crowd raised their voice, and Hogg has a little look to see if there's a weak shoulder, which there isn't. Matsushima loves to probe, loves to go forward. Wonderful for Matsushima. Van der tries to strip the ball, but it's there for Japan. Their star man has found a way into Scotland's 22, and it's there now for Nagare. Finn Russell in, but there was an infringement before that, and it all coming from the effort of Matsushima. He is just wonderfully balanced. So then Matsuda with what should be a straightforward opportunity for Japan. And it is, the flags go up and they hit the front. 26 minutes almost. Off in a very nasty incident, but everybody okay to continue. Finn Russell, Stuart Hogg. Keeping ball in hand again. Hogg, oh, wonderful Stuart Hogg bounces around. And then the ball to Harris and Harris into the Japanese 22 and almost away. Hogg the conjurer. Now Batty, and now Finn Russell, and it's an advantage as Hogg gets his hands on the ball once again. This time it's off to Johnson, into that 22, Ali Price, quick ball for Scotland. Japan, scrambling back, have their defence set, but remember Scotland still have that advantage. And on they go this time, it's Gilchrist, and now it's Turner playing scrum half. They have men over, there is a gap, and through it goes the captain, Stuart Hogg. He orchestrated, and he finished. Magic from Hogg, and they love it at Murrayfield. Scotland can come on the counter-attack, and this man, he's electric when he gets the ball, gets outside of Meno. Leach scrambles to get him. They build some phases there. Chris Harris does well to hold on to the ball, and there was a penalty coming. Lovely little short line, and he gets through Nakano. Yeah, it looks like a missed tackle, but the truth of the matter is there were two or three more outside. And Finn Russell will surely add the additional two, and Scotland back in front once again. Double score, Scotland 12, Japan 6. Ali Price, now will they go for the second surge? Bayliss 
encouraging his pack on. Price stays away on this occasion. We've been told by the referee to use it, and Bayless does so. Intricate around the back line, and it's brought some space. And out wide is Darcy Graham, the crowd on their feet. Graham back inside and over. Great finish from Graham. Had to navigate his way around the onrushing defence that were scrambling across the field to try and close the gap, but he took his foot off the gas. Little wraparound here, gets the win. Passes just a little bit behind, he's got to check it, but what a step back inside. Brilliant finish. The Cano, he shot out of the line there, and we're talking about timing and defence, he got it wrong there. But Darcy Graham did brilliantly there. Great score from Scotland. On its way, and the radar is back on. Up go the flags. It is an additional two. And it's a full 19 for Scotland. Three tries. Van der Merva, Hogg, and Graham. Two conversions. And they lead it at half time. Scotland 19, Japan 6. Time leading try scorer gets us underway at the start of the second half at BT Murrayfield. 19 points to six. Japan in desperate need of the next score, and they could do it with being seven. Three tries from Scotland in that first half. That third try just before the break, a real hammer blow for Japan, who had performed through the mid third of that get first half particularly well and looked to have Scotland rattled. Leading, remember, at one point, six points to five. They need to set about yeah, their business, the and they have an early penalty. Alan Quinlan alongside. Just over the shoulder, just a penalty. Yeah. Time, that's just uh, Gilchrist. He's just a little bit high in a tackle. Then to get in the right areas, they're trying to play as we know they will do, and that's their biggest strength. But they, they've just got to cut out the mistakes, not kick loosely to Scotland, and keep building, uh, trying to get into multi phase all the time. Well, that's a good start from this particular passage of play as Fafita comes onto it at pace and it's presented for Nagare. And Japan threaten the Scottish 22 as Craig Miller is wrapped up by Jamie Batty, amongst others. Advantage being played to Japan, so they have a free run at it. In to secure possession goes Cornelius in the second row. It's there now for Nagare and maybe a little bit of room out wide. It's shifted with that forward. We won't stop to find out. We'll continue on as Fafita goes forward once again. Nagare, this is better from Japan. Well inside that Scottish 22, looking for the start to this second half. That their ambitions will... Well, before we get any further, let's hear what the referee's going to say because there is a proper lesson coming. And the lesson, well, it wasn't learned from the first half. Too slow to roll, repeated. And the referee is going to send Jimmy Batty to the sin bin. Struck through and flanks go up and it is nine points for Japan. Scotland 19, Japan 9 after 42 and a half minutes at Murrayfield. And Jamie Batty's on the bold step. Scotland through Bayless, now back to their own 10-metre line. Good line speed from the Japanese, and Finn Russell says, we'll go over the top and see if that gives us any joy, but it doesn't. It's cut off and comfortably dealt with by Japan, and now a long pass, finds a little bit of room, and there are some of the quicker men up against some of the big boys, but didn't George Turner do well, because it he was did brilliantly. two he backs did. against two front rowers. Turner needed to be aware, and he did the job really well on... They come, Cornelson, and now Miller, the big boys for Japan, towards that 22. Was there another arm involved in there? In behind it goes, Matsushima! Almost held up short, pops it up, and it's taken by Darcy Gray, but we will go, by Van der we will go back. So then, another attempted goal, another straightforward attempted goal, and a successful one for Matsuda. So the change is coming for Scotland. We'll see Stuart McAnally come in as well. I thought Finn Russell and Scotland might go for the post there, as we were looking at the substitutes. The change 
is coming now. Russell goes to the corner and it'll be a throw for McAnally as he replaces George Turner. Hamish Watson is back in, so is James. McAnally taken into the mall. Scotland go. The substitute hooker, his first involvement. Will it be a try scoring involvement? Yes, it will. It's great power. They just spin around, so it spins around a little bit. Ivalu here can't get in low. He's got to get much lower there for feet to tries, but great control from the Scottish pack. They have scored from what we thought should have been a Japanese line out, and advantage should have been over. That one is brought in, and over it goes, and it's 26 points to 12. And after Japan's mini recovery, it's Scotland with the try and conversion to stretch it out once more. Run out here, I'm sure, is uh, it's perfect, hard to be racing. That's for sure. Jeffrey. Inside the final quarter now of this game uh, is Japan probe and probe beautifully. Deep, deep down, five metres away from the Scottish line, and they will get the throw to the line out of 50 22. Yeah, it was a great kick, wasn't it? From Nakamura. Scotland were a little bit lateral in their defence there, they didn't push off the line. Give him that opportunity to put that kick in. They sure do. Sakate. And is it just held on to? It is just held on to, and it's better than that. They're over. Japan score. Tatafu, the substitute, only on the pitch. A matter of moments. And like McAnally for Scotland, is rewarded with a try. Well, here's where the check will come because there'll be a question of whether it was knocked forward. I don't believe that it was. Cornelson was the second row, uh, took the ball. Uh, well, if this one goes over, it's going to make for a very, very interesting final 15 minutes at Murrayfield as Matsuda looks to cut the gap to seven. Oh dear, oh dear. To pound away at the door. Eight phases, they're making ground. They're making Scotland work. They still believe there's something in this. And the crowd, for the first time in a very long time, raise their voice because NATO, this is a seminal moment in this game. Nagare, it's advantage being played to Japan. And there's none accruing, so we'll go back for the penalty. Oh, it's nervy, isn't it, for Scotland? The crowd have gone quiet. To bring it back to just one score and make the final eight minutes of this one a bit of a cliffhanger. He's done so. Up go the flags. Scotland 26, Japan 20. An enormous amount of work as Scotland's outside centre. Schumann on the angle. And Big Shoe was urged on by Scotland. That isn't particularly good, though, and it almost gave an opportunity to Japan to gather possession again. Advantage being played to Scotland. Bayliss tidies it up. And Scotland now with three minutes left on the clock and six points to their advantage and advantage in this moment are in control. Schumann. Sebastian off his feet. Uh, the referee will come back. Yeah, it's direct from Scotland, isn't it? And powerful up the middle, good carries. Number 22, White, offside. But Scotland have thrown Japan, found a counter punch right to this final minute of the game. But now, surely it's out of reach as the lead is. There he is to carry once more. That's time. This time. That'll do it. That'll do it. A couple of seconds left on our clock, but it had made no difference. Scotland, in the end, do what they need to do. It wasn't overly impressive, but it was good enough against a much improved Japanese side. The final score.
is victory for Scotland at BT Murrayfield. A happy end to the series for Gregor Townsend. They've won it by 29 points to 20.